Well, LGBTQ advocacy groups and experts are concerned about a wave of discrimination hitting the community as monkeypox has so far been identified mainly among men who have had sexual relations with other men. David Hawkins joins me now, executive director of Westland LGBTQ2 Plus Center. David, um, a very critical conversation. I appreciate you giving me your time today. Well, thank you so much for having us. Absolutely. I know that, the, you know, the organization that you work with has been fighting stigma. This is from HIV AIDS for years now. And now we're hearing a similar concern around monkeypox. Yeah, I think it. I think it's really tough. It's an unfortunate position to be in. It's an unfortunate circumstance to be in. And I think also just coming off of also the COVID-19 pandemic or, or kind of st hoping to come out of that, I think that there's still a lot of a lot of frustration around that. And so I worry that, and I think a lot of people worry that um, talk, that this conversation around um, about monkeypox will indirectly end up impacting and stigmatizing the LGBTQ2 plus community again. Yeah, indeed. And again, we know and we've sp spoken with health officials, this is not something that can be spread or is spread as a sexually transmitted disease. It is in close contact. That is how it is spread. So anyone who has it can get it from anybody else, you know, r regardless. This is, this is something that can be spread in the community. But why do you think still, after so long and such a long fight when it comes to breaking the stigma around HIV AIDS, that, again, people are very quick to judge the community? I mean, the, I think the unfortunate reality is that there's, there's still a lot of misinformation being spread. We saw it again with COVID. We, we've seen it with the HIV and the AIDS pandemic. We've seen it with a lot of different things. And so I think that that, that false information will persist. We, we have very strong community organizations that are working to destigmatize HIV and AIDS still, and they still have a lot of work to do, and they're doing that work. But I think the reality is, is that we may also need to start having these conversations about monkeypox. Mm -hmm. if, this, if this trend continues, we're going to have to start having those conversations. Talk to me a bit more about that and what more needs to be done. Uh, you know, the community itself has gone through already so much when it comes to the targeting and stereotyping, adding on this and now, you know, and, and we saw the, 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 the type of um, negative behavior around COVID-19, uh, whether it was within the LGBTQ2S plus community, whether it was within BIPOC communities as well being targeted. I think one of the important things that we need to keep in mind is that these kind of trends do not just affect the the communities that we're actively talk, talking about. Mm -hmm. This might start as an LGBTQ2 plus issue, but it won't necessarily stay that way. And I think it's important to recognize that across all marginalized communities, we all experience different versions of these sim these similar phenomena, these similar circumstances. And so I think it's important that we as we as a community have in our toolkit the the ability to to work with all these other organizations and to really build each other's voices up as well as our own um, because each one of us as an organization we may have very limited capacity to get that message out there and mm -hmm. to actually to engage with the community and educate the community but if we can do it as a as a united front that makes the message that much stronger and therefore we hopefully are better able to combat the misinformation that will perpetuate itself and, and we know how dangerous that misinformation can be and what it can lead to what are you hearing from the community on this so far honestly i'm not hearing too much okay. um mostly as of right now it's kind of people are starting to talk about like oh great we just got over COVID. Now there's this new thing. Yeah. And so I've seen a couple of those kind of those tongue in cheek jokes on Facebook, on social media saying, oh, no, what what else is new? Um, so I don't think it's necessarily public knowledge yet that mm. so far it seems to be spreading mostly in um, the LGBTQ2 plus community. But I don't think that that trend is going to stay true forever. If mm -hmm. this continues, then soon we will be having those conversations, and we as communities need to be ready to actually engage with them. Yeah, and that engagement, as you say, is so critical in all of this. David, great to have you on the program. Appreciate the conversation. Indeed, an important one. David Hawkins, Executive Director of Westland LGBTQ2 Plus Center. David, thank you again for this. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome.